Recently we've shown you the BMW 8 Series Coupe on Autogefühl and this one here now is the one where you can also open the top. In about 15 seconds it becomes the BMW 8 Series Cabrio or convertible. And this will be a new competitor for sure for, for example, an S-Class convertible, but BMW also wants to be this one here, a sports car, as we've also shown you with the 8 Series Coupe. We'll take you on a tour here on the exterior and the interior and what we can expect from driving this one. As always, in full HD, full screen and full length. Let's go. In the front here you can see that convertible and also the coupe they are pretty much alike they are basically the same vehicles of course we'll come to the differences very soon here in the front you can see those slim headlamps those ones optional equipped with the BMW laser light you get the adaptive LED from standard equipment those ones then you can use for the 600 meter high beam function if that's allowed in your market in the front grille, you can see we've got those adaptive fins. They open according to the cooling system of the vehicle and the frames. They're either in chrome or you can get the shadow line to have it more in a darker black tone. And as the third tone is also an aluminum tone, a gray tone available. So I also have already a choice for the double kidney style. 4 meters 84 or 15 foot 9 is the total length. That's also the same um, we have with the coupe. The only difference uh, is of course the roof line and the chassis has to be stiffened then always with the convertibles a little bit so you have a little bit more weight. That's also why also together with the roof construction the weight balance is not anymore 50-50 front rear but more like 48-52. But the engineers actually have told us that it works pretty well also with this setup and that the convertibles may be even you know, gaining with this change. Well, again, close the roof for you. You can take another look here in the side profile, how it opens and closes. You can still do that up to a speed of 50 kilometers an hour. That's basically a basic speed now in the automotive industry. And also again, good advantage if you compare it to a hard top with a soft top, you always have less weight. You're more flexible to open and close it. And you can here now see that the Coupe style line of the hardtop is basically being kept here with a very flat A pillars and then also towards the rear of the car with those modern roof shops you can really get a smooth transition over to the shoulders so you don't see the whole construction which is underneath so much and I think closed one also looks as good as it looks with the open one rather with a simple straight design line right here that goes all the way through. You can either get 19 inch rims or those ones optional 20 inch here in a multi-spoke design also with contrasting brake calipers and I think it works well with this dravite gray color you can see but we already shown you a lot of different color choices if you check our coupe video. Then this one in this case here this is not an active air breather this is just a design element and you already get the M badge if you have this 850i the petrol engine. From the rear perspective you can see that also the rear end of the roof is being smoothly continued to the rear. Of course this is where Coupe and Cabriolet are most unlike. We see more a flat area in the, in, in the rear right there. But still you get those horizontally drawn tail lamps and the car also appears very wide is actually as wide as the coupe right there also with the m850i batch there x drive is also standard equipment you always get it with all-way drive and in this case the hatch opens just a little bit differently here we go so this is also a prototype model so that can happen there we go with the opening and you see it is you know also quite as wide as with the coupe 
there's a little, little bit less room inside, we'll soon show you that too. If you take a look at the lower area with those exhaust, the outer tip is just for beauty purposes. The inner ones, you have them altogether four pipes and the outer ones each have this exhaust valve. When you're in the Sport Plus mode, then you get also this roaring sound. Under the hood, we have the same engines as for the Coupé. You start with the diesel as a 3 liter R6 with 320 horsepower and does 5 seconds to 100 kilometers or 62 miles an hour. And this one here is the 4.4 liter V8 turbo petrol engine. This one then here 3.8 seconds to 100 kilometers or 62 miles an hour. So the speed or acceleration difference is just 0.1 seconds if you compare it to the Coupé. So there's almost the same driving performance than convertible and the coupe. Both coupe and convertible and also both petrol and diesel, no matter which you pick, come also with a sports equipment, so to say. That is the adaptive M suspension, all-wheel drive, of course, for all engines. Then the petrol engine, the only thing that that one gets exclusively is the anti-tilt function, so you reduce the corner roll. But everything else you can also get for the diesel, also for example optional with a sports package, the rear differential lock. That one comes as stand equipment also for the petrol engine. This is the car key, you can also see the M colors at the side. This is the normal slim key with the coupe, I've shown you the one with the uh, with the screen on the inside. This one if you, you know, this is the understatement key, so to say. But it's slimmer in the pocket for sure. So let's open the doors right there. See also contrast color between bright and black. Optional speaker system, really big speakers. You cannot fit so many stuff at the inside of the doors. Pretty slim right there, but you can open the trunk also from there. Then you always have this illuminated entry cap, the M50i. Also indicates the carbon core, so also carbon fiber is used for the chassis of this vehicle. In this case we have a bright color for the seats. See so you also get the same seats as we have in the Coupé. Shoulder accentuations, electronic control, quite voluminous also at the sides. However, they do not offer any alternatives as a service other than animal skin, so that's rather looking backwards. Then if you take a look at the steering wheel, it can also be heated right there with a separate button. And those ones here, the left control controls the ACC. You can set it right there, but also a speed limiter. On the right side, you can have the voice control, but also change the volume of the vehicle. And soon we'll tell you more about those digital gauges and also the central infotainment system. And what about the neck? The neck, oh yes, Holger indicates a very important feature because he was, he's also getting a cold neck quite a, quite a lot. <laughs> Here it is. So this one is the neck heater exclusively for the convertible. You can set it then at the middle console. We'll take a look at that very soon. This could be a nice feature for spring and autumn when it's, you know, not super cold that you don't wear a jacket, but you still want to have it a little bit warmer. Now let's get inside. The car sits very low. It was actually quite quite easy to get inside as well. I'm 1 meters 86 or 6 foot 1 if you haven't subscribed yet. And there is still some headroom left then if the top is closed and this isn't much of a big difference to the coupe so um, it's not that you can pick the convertible if you're a little bit taller. I mean it's not plenty of headroom in both cars because of this very flat design line but again it doesn't make a difference if you pick this one and so I have a rule for myself if there is a vehicle where there's a coupe and the convertible I always go with the open top variant. What about you? Then the seats have the electric control, you can also lift them up a little bit and also in the front you can control the lumbar support electronically as well as the steering column also with an electric adjustment in reach and height. It goes quite high up there so you can see here even, even I would put it a little bit lower. And of course used in winter times the heated steering wheel. Don't wonder this is a prototype model, so it will also have the convertible as a visualization in the middle part then. And you have the RPMs on the right and the speed on the left. And in the middle part you will also be able to see, for example, GPS information 
and you can have consumption check on the right side or also a G-Force media. This is the interior overview, also with a big middle console wrapped tightly, 10.25 inch screen. On the left point we have the digital instruments, 12.3 inch. This one here is a touch screen, you can zoom in and out with that, but also still use the classic controller on the lower part. The climate unit is separate, so you don't have to go to the infotainment system, I'm glad. And you control it like this. Also two zone AC, metal knurled knob for the volume and those are some hotkey buttons you can freely program. In the lower part you can open this cover, you can different stylings for this one. This one is a shiny wood surface. Adaptive cup holders in the lower part with a normal USB slot and an inductive charging pad for your smartphone. So let's take a look at the camera system. We had to activate the engine for that. Here in the studio, of course, it's a little bit loud because we have a wide echo for that. And we also have different camera views. This is the rear, for example. If I put in reverse gear, we also see the top drone view from above. This one is also pre-production software, but you can see you have the rear view and the top drone view then and can switch around. And if I go to the front, for example, I have a front view camera. So you can also, for example, see that you don't damage maybe your optional carbon package spoiler. Here we can also see the head-up display, you will also get a GPS information. If you approach the next intersection you will also see a small map view for that as well as the speed and the allowed speed. Head-up display also standard equipment for this vehicle. This is a crystal gear shifter. So you just pull it backwards, put in the gear, left side then if you have put the drive mode to go to the sports shifting mode, that the gears are turned up higher and you shift down earlier then. The camera system is accessible here, then the driving modes, for example if you go to the sports mode, all the parameters, throttle input, also steering will be set on a, let's say, crisper way. This turning pressing knob also with metal knurling around with the hot keys for the infotainment system. And those are the keys I have talked about earlier. If you press this buttons, you can have the neck heater in three different levels and the convertible top either with the key from the outside as I've shown you or from the inside right there, pull it or press it. The middle armrest folds open like this. You have some more storage room, maybe even for a smartphone once more and this is USB so, uh, device, uh, USB-C, sorry, USB-C port and I think it's a good mix that we have USB, the normal one and the C, so it's a good transition. We can also use the 12 volt power supply to get more USB ports if you, for example, use an adapter right there. Now let's try to get in the rear and it's of course easier with the <laughs> top down. You pull this latch here and the seat, when it would be all the way back, it would slide forward also and then you can get easier inside. This one, of course, now an easy exercise. However, you're a little bit more limited in the convertible here in the shoulder area because of the roof construction. And when you put the seat backward, even if it's all the way forward, it doesn't really fit with my knees. And in the front, there's hardly anyone that could sit there. You can also take a look over at the driver's seat. As I would be driving, there's literally no room left. So you see those very thick, luxurious seats for the front passengers, of course, limit the room you have on the rear. Probably you have even more room in a 4 series convertible, so that's, you know, this car is not really thought out to be a 4 seater convertible. You have those emergency seats here, maybe for smaller trips, but that's about it. However, you can use it for child seats, for example, there are also Isofix um, anchor points on those both seats. and. The rear part here, also because of the roof construction, is a little bit more upright than the coupé. In the coupé it goes a little bit more back. That's however I think it's not, you know, um, a severe drawback because sitting upright in the rear is actually quite okay. Um, however, then again, you should be way smaller than me. This is with open top. Um, we've seen in the coupé that it's also a limitation headroom wise and it's of course really exciting how that one plays out then with the convertible and I first hype myself, I'm not sure, <laughs> there it goes, how that one plays out as for the headroom. Maybe it's even a little bit better because there's the soft top. So here we go, also at the later stage then the windows go up and here well, I do hit my head at the ceiling, but since it's a soft top, 
it's indeed actually better than in the coupe because it's not so hard at the very top. However, again, you see you are very limited, so just recommendable for very, very short rides for adults or just for kids. You can also open the rear hatch with a foot kicking mechanism or with the key or then with the button right there. And whereas we have 420 liters with the coupe, we have 350 liters here, so it's a little bit limited in this area because we need the construction there for the roof. Here we can also load things through because with we've already done it right there with flipping the seats, you have to release them right here on the right side and the same one on the left side over there. And if you release them, then you have to go around and then flip those seats. You can also load longer things through. And what would be the setup then if we have the roof opened? That's like this. So you have to manually use this one. So this would be a limitation. And then of course it gets a little bit close with, for example, you know, a cabin trolley or something. We can also get one for testing. Um, but you, I mean, that's, that's quite normal for the convertibles that you are very limited in height then if you want to drive with open top. Here we go. The first time I try it like this. So this would already work. I think that's good. You can also put it up right in here. See if we would try to fold it flat. It is possible. Just have to be a little bit careful like this. So this works too. Then you could push it all the way through. So this is still possible height-wise. And then you could add another one in the front of that. So for two people for the weekend or for going to the airport, that works very well. And of course, you're more flexible if you're driving with the closed top then again, you can move them around freely. And now to our conclusion for today with our sneak preview of the BMW 8 Series Cabrio. It is for sure one of the most exclusive convertibles on the market now, and you also have to pay the price for it. So the coupe already is just, you know, between 100,000 euros and 150,000 euros, depending on the engine and the equipment you pick. This one here always then also depending on the version, a couple of thousand euros, even more expensive than the Coupe. That's also, you know, a normal pricing strategy. It is somewhat a successor of a 6 Series convertible and the same also counts for the Coupe because the 6 Series Coupe and the convertible will be discontinued. However, they are continued on a higher level, so price-wise and also driving performance-wise. We already experienced that with the 8 Series Coupe, so it is considering the length of the vehicle a quite agile car still. However, if you seek rather sporty convertibles or sporty coupes, you would rather go with a smaller car. This one here, as I already told you with the Coupe, I see this also as a representative convertible because you don't have so much room on the inside on the rear bench. It's not the most agile convertible. They would rather go with a Roadster. But this one here also when you want to use it, for example, for show off purposes for sure. We also picked for the conclusion this uh, three quarter back perspective because both the Kobe and the convertible have a quite nice look if you look at exactly from this perspective. The same goes, of course, for the front, because those two here, Coupe and Convertible, are rather design objects. As for the driving, from this one here, we can also expect basically the same driving performance than with the Coupe. Looking forward to that at a later stage. And you might also have already heard that there will also be a grand coupe for this very vehicle then with four doors. We will, of course, keep you updated on that. Join us also next time on Autogofu and please leave us your comments about the 8 Series Convertible.